Hello, my name is Thayan and I like to experiment with Midjourney version 5.2. Yes, it is finally here after a long wait and I can't wait to show you my first impression of it. Let's get right into it. So it was released on the 22nd or 23rd June of 2023 in my case. The 5.2 seems to be the current default now and you can check it in the slash settings. So if you don't give any version to your prompt, you will get this new 5.2 style. Let's take it for a test drive with a landscape in aspect ratio of 16 to 9 with a seed number of 777 so we can compare all the other settings better later on. The landscapes look good, but they still do have some reminiscent style of the 5.1 in them. They're not that overloaded with detail, but there is enough of it. So far no additional weird stuff that should not be on the images. Here is wildlife that seems to have still kind of a lot of stuff in there like 5.1 does. I tried out Animal 2, it is similar, but does something different. I do kind of like these and I think we'll try out the new zoom out feature with one of these images later in this video. This one is macro. There is some additional detail here but overall quite nice pictures. They don't look like real photographs, but they don't look painted either, so probably a 3D rendered look or out of a really sharp computer game. City still has no changes in my opinion, I don't really like them still. So I tried out some other places that have a collection of houses. This one is Village. It is very quaint. I get kind of a fantasy or fairy tale feeling from these. And the top left one is quite whimsical too. I didn't really want to get completely rid of the city environment, so here is street. It has a way better feel to it, although the streets look like after a garbage collector's strike and heavy rain. Or maybe I'm just not used to seeing such dirty streets. Interiors look very grandiose and regal and kind of cluttered as well. I do like this kind of style and the arched windows. The architecture looks really nice, at times futuristic, and other times historical and very impressive. And because architecture doesn't always do what I would like it to do, I tried some other words that mean basically the same thing. Here is building. Just like version 5.1, it seems to kind of stack houses on top of each other. I just would like one building please, not 20 cram together. This one is house. It's a little bit better, at times kind of unrealistic still. And it tends to change the location from a city to a really isolated place like a tiny island or the middle of the forest. Changing the topic, here is portrait. Kind of painted look. Again stylistically reminiscent of 5.1. And because we always seem to get women in the portraits. Okay mostly. Here is man. Painted look still, I don't know what's going on with the exploding or attacking mist in these. And most of them seem to be sleeping with the exception of one. So now again back to my usual prompts, here is fantasy. Again many women, one sleeping beauty and one picture with an underwater woman with lots of fish. I don't know what it is with Midjourney version 5 and fish, there seems to be a recurring theme with them. And it is continuing on with the 5.2 version stylistically. I do like the fantasy castle image on the top right with the swirling waters and heavy clouds. Continuing with the fantasy theme, I wanted to try out wizard as well. And we do get many bearded old men doing some spells. They look quite nice. Then one of my typical staples, sci-fi. Lots of alien spaceships. No spacesuits. And the look of these images is kind of cinematic and ominous. And here is a few bonus ones I just wanted to try out for fun. Continuing with the ominous, this is supervillain. I really like how these came out, they look so villainous. And here we have heart. 
This one I have used in some of my previous videos about version 4, but I haven't prompted it in version 5 I think. Or who knows, I have prompted so many things that I can't even remember anymore. But I do feel like I haven't done that lately. Anyway these look cool, I especially like the one combined with a landscape in the lower left. Here is some very epic looking trees. I really like how these have turned out. Another favorite of mine to prompt in version 4 and it looks like this in version 5.2. We seem to get some painted style, lots of women too in the image. I just wanted one flower, not flowers, but okay, not my favorite though, version 4 had some epic stuff compared to this. Maybe we should try some of the other features quickly as well before I prompt everything under the sun and beyond. Speaking of beyond the sun, here is a quick alien as well. And I'm really impressed that there has been no text or watermarks or anything extra really in all of these tests. So even though it was last on the patch notes list, let's look at the zoom out feature. I have selected this image for trying to remove the black border from the image so let's see how that works. So for zoom we have four options for each upscaled image. So you won't see these before you press the U number under the grid you get when you first generate images from a prompt. So here we have the zoom out 2x. It actually got rid of the black border there on its own already and I didn't have to do anything extra. But I do feel like this zoom out was kind of a lot. This one was zoom out 1.5x and it is a lot better. It again removed the black border on its own it would seem, so that's very awesome. And I like these a lot better than the 2x zoom out. This one was the make square button. So it did kind of zoom out a little bit and generated a continuation of the image in some parts there. Meaning that it didn't just cut out a square portion of the image and leave it like that, it zoomed out a little as well and added some stuff there. And finally here is the custom zoom which was supposed to help with the black borders. I think all of them helped with the black borders, but I guess with this one you get a prompt like with a remix feature where you can specify a different aspect ratio along with the zoom. And it looks like you can basically modify both the aspect ratio and the zoom value. You can change the aspect ratio to basically anything now and you will still get the exact same image out of it with just additional stuff imagined around it. It didn't work like this before when you did the same prompt along with exactly the same seed number, it almost always generated totally different images that looked somewhat similar sometimes to other aspect ratios. But this totally solves that problem if you accidentally prompt something awesome in a wrong aspect ratio. Now you can change the aspect ratio of an image with custom zoom. And you can also play around with the zoom value, which needs to be between 1.0 and 2.0 according to this error message that I got when I tried out setting it to 5. But 1.0 means that you don't even have to zoom out and you can change the aspect ratio. I also tried out the zoom out with a person where the head was kind of cut off. This we got with the zoom 1.5x. And this one with 2x zoom. And I also tried to zoom one of the 1.5x once more with 1.5x. You can basically do that as much as you like. And it seems to depend on the image, sometimes in the case of this supervillain, we seem to get some additional black borders whereas in the architecture image there was a black border originally that disappeared with all of the zoom outs. I promised to zoom out the animal images as well, so here's an overview of what happened with those. So here is the deer creature, there was nothing really going on in the background so it kind of filled it out with some mist and unrecognizable stuff. And here is the rabbit creature. Kind of a similar story, there was nothing in the back to zoom out on, so in here it seems at 2x zoom it added some additional flower wreaths to the image. There is so much to see and test with the new version, let's also look at the new variations. 
For this I'll be looking at one of the landscapes I created earlier in this video. So with the default new high variation we get these images. They do look like the earlier image, but all are distinctly looking different. And I guess the subtle variation is the older type of variation where you do get the variation, but way less differences in the images. The stylized aesthetic has also got an overhaul and should affect the look of the images more strongly than before. Here is an example of different stylized values for a prompt Lovecraftian creature. All images were generated with the same seed number and the only thing that was different for each of them was the stylized value. So based on this prompt, the stylized seems to be adding some detail, as all the ones before the default value are a little less detailed. And all the ones after that get more and more detailed with each stylized value I tested out. But you can have it at any number between 0 and 1000. The last time I looked at the stylized value more closely, it was in version 4. And then it tended to kind of repeat in patterns, like values 50 and 500 looked similar, and 100 and 1000 looked similar. And here is another example with fairy tale forest. I don't know why I have chosen so dark examples for this, but let's just run with this. The lower stylized values again show less detail. The forest actually looks like the graphics of an older video game in my opinion. And the higher stylized values pile on more and more detail. And the last and really interesting feature we got is the slash shorten. You can basically give it any text and it will analyze it and give you an overview of that words you should use and what words are important. As I normally don't really do long prompts, I decided to test this out with the slash describe feature. I gave it this image and got these prompts as a suggestion. I took the first one and ran it through the slash shorten command and got this as a response. I did try out the shortened prompts as well, but they didn't really look anything like the original image. But I think I'll do a more detailed video about this feature in the future, because I really like analyzing this sort of stuff. There seems to be an additional details button where I got this information from. This one is exactly the stuff I have been looking at when prompting things based on what appears in the images. But this basically tells you which words or tokens are emphasized in a prompt and what has more importance on the end result. I will definitely be investigating this in more detail in the future. So here was a look at the new 5.2 version. My takeaway is that the look of it is quite similar to version 5.1. But we get a lot of new interesting features along with it that people have been requesting for a long time, so it definitely was worth the wait. And I will still continue looking for word combinations that do make your images look different. I don't know how much time I will have to make videos in the following couple of weeks, due to some personal stuff going on, but I'll do my best to not leave you without any content. As always if you like this kind of content and would like to see more of it in the future, please consider liking this video or subscribing to this channel. And if you have any comments or observations, let me know, I'll do my best to reply if I know what to reply. Thank you for watching and let's continue prompting.